All right, time to get this thing officially underway. The 25th class into the Indiana State Athletics Hall of Fame. Our first inductee for the 25th class, Kerry Myers. Everyone has heard the story about a small town girl that really wasn't recruited very hard, turning into an All-American. Welcome to the story of Carrie Myers. A graduate of Seeger High School, Myers came to Indiana State with a smile on her face and a work ethic that was second to none. Carrie had this positive attitude. She was always smiling, always there doing things really well. Myers never threw the weight or hammer prior to stepping onto the ISU campus. But under the guidance of throws coach Mark Rodriguez, she got to work and it paid off right from the start. 20 years ago, I had the privilege and honor of recruiting and coaching Carrie all four years of her career. Myers qualified for the NCAA Outdoor National Championships four straight years in the hammer and twice qualified for indoor nationals in the weight throw, finishing ninth in 1999 and fourth in 2000. She was a very good athlete. And as I said, Mark brought that out of her and um, coming from never having thrown it to one year later qualifying for the NCAA meet in that first year was pretty amazing. She was a two-time Missouri Valley Conference champion in the weight throw and a two-time champion in the hammer. In 2000, Myers was named the Missouri Valley Conference Indoor Field Most Valuable Player. Her throw of 202 feet 9 inches done in 2000 is second all-time in school history and she is tied for second all-time in the 20-pound indoor weight throw at 67 feet, nine and a quarter inches. You know, she's the one who sacrificed and put the work in. She's the one who spent all the long hours in the weight room and at practice. She's the one who came in with a great attitude all the time. And one of the reasons Carrie was so successful is because she gave me 100% effort every time, every throw. Small town girl with a big city smile and a work ethic second to none is now the newest member of the Indiana State Athletics Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Athletics Hall of Fame, Carrie Myers. Thank you so much for nominating and allowing me to be part of the 25th class of the Indiana University's, Indiana State University's Athletic Hall of Fame. I just want to take a few minutes here to thank the ones who have helped me during my career at ISU. I first want to thank Indiana State for believing in me as a high school athlete. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to compete and taking care of me both athletically and academically during my time in Terre Haute. I want to thank my head coaches, John Garland and John McNichols for their support, and most importantly, my throwing coach, Mark Rodriguez. If it wasn't for your dedication to coaching, I would not have continued to get better and flourish as a student athlete. Coach always pushed me to see my full potential in the ring. I would doubt him, but he would keep insisting I could throw further and get stronger. He helped develop a confidence in me that is still present today, while being wife to Brian and mom to Ellie, Luke, Jake, and Drake. I would also like to thank all of my fellow Sycamore teammates for all of their support and encouragement, not only during the season at each and every meet, but also in the off season. Sometimes it felt like our season never ended in track and field between indoor and outdoor competitions, workouts, training, and practicing. I want to next thank my family for all their support. 
throughout my years at ISU. I am thankful to have had such support and love. You were there through my ups and downs as an athlete, not only at the ring on campus, but across the country at conference and nationals. There were very few meets that you missed, and you've always been my biggest fans. <clears throat> and lastly, I want to thank God. It says in Psalm 107.1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. I was humbled to hear about the opportunity to be inducted into ISU's 25th class of the Athletic Hall of Fame. I may not have given credit to him at the time, but it's only because he gave me the opportunity and the abilities to compete as a college student athlete. I am truly thankful. Congratulations. Our next inductee into the 25th class, Brian Bolin. Each one of us has needed the chance to prove ourselves in whatever profession we want. For Brian Bolin, two years after he graduated from Indiana State, his alma mater gave him the chance of a lifetime. He came in and interviewed and he had prepared a great resume and interviewed very well. And I really liked him and uh, you know he had no coaching experience other than working camps but there was something in his soul that said to me this guy can coach. In five seasons at Indiana State the enthusiastic Bolin went 121 and 32 as a career mark going 57 and 3 in conference matches never losing a conference match in his final three seasons at the helm. In fact, the Sycamores finished third in 1997, Bolin's first year at the helm, which was his worst finish in his five years. Bolin was named the Missouri Valley Conference Coach of the Year four times and the ITA Region 5 Coach of the Year in 2000. Under Bolin, the Sycamores made the NC2A Regionals three times. Never before in school history had this been done. Among the first for Bolin and the Sycamores from 1997 to 2001, MVC Championships in 1999, NCAA Tournament victory in 2000, Indoor ITA National Team Championship appearance in 2000, and a top 20 ranking in 2001 in at number 18. I mean, he'd come in the door, and he always said, can I talk to you? And it was like, bang, 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 bang. Now, Brian, take a breath now. Let's, uh, but he did have a plan. Um, he was very successful for us. Not only did he recruit very good athletes, they were very good students. Young, enthusiastic, and always looking for his kids to get better. Bolin had 11 players named all-conference in singles competition, 16 in doubles, 11 named Scholar Athlete First Team. Brian Bolin was given the chance, and he took full advantage of it. And now, he's a member of the Indiana State Athletics Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, Mr. Brian Bolin. Five minutes. Whew. I'll tell you what, looking at those, uh, that video tonight, I sure have grown over the years. <laughs> wow. Thanks, John. You know, you're the only guy I know that's faster on email than me. This guy is organized. Appreciate all you did to put this together. It's a tremendous honor um, to be inducted in the 25th class uh, of the Indiana State University Hall of Fame. And I'm so grateful to um, everyone here and the committee. Um, Athletic Director um, Sherard Klingscales, if I got that right, um, President Bradley, and um, everyone on the committee, thank you so much. It's one of the great honors of my life. I love this place. Came back, it's the first time I've been back since Dwayne Clee was inducted in the Hall of Fame. I think it was, uh, it was quite a while ago, wasn't it, Dwayne? You were in the first class. But I'll tell you what, um, it has changed a lot, and I loved 
being a sycamore, and I loved representing this university and the people here, what makes it so incredibly special. I um, want to take a minute to congratulate Dick Carey and Quentin. Um, I read your bios and obviously have a chance to see what you've accomplished. It's absolutely uh, tremendous and amazing. My wife and I were driving from Indianapolis today, um, and we were talking about our memories here. Becky received her PhD here. I was. I chased her down here. That's how I ended up here, actually. I chased this young woman down here. It was probably the best decision I ever made in my life. Um, and she did get her PhD uh, from Indiana State. And really, at the end of the day, Indiana State, we owe everything to Indiana State. Everything we've ever accomplished, including having four children, we owe to this great university. So uh, our gratitude is, is truly second to none. But at the end of the day, just a few memories. Um, we were talking about a few memories, and some of the things I remember so well is our first conference championship in 1999. Uh, the school had never won a Missouri Valley Conference Championship in men's tennis, and that was a huge thrill of a lifetime. I remember beating Georgia at National Indoors. That was a, a, big, a big deal for us. They were one of the top five teams in the country, and I remember our athletic director at the time, Andy Myers, was there, and we played Stanford the next day, and there were some Stanford parents that we're like, who in the world is Indiana State? What are they doing in this tournament? And she made sure they knew that we were not only there, we were going to beat them. Well, we came up a little bit short, but um, I loved her spirit and appreciated that uh, she was there uh, to support us. I remember beating Indiana and Purdue um, in the first, and in, our, in the NCAA regionals that we hosted. Um, we hosted the NCAAs three years in a row. But at the end of the day, it was all about the people. People was what made this place great. The colleagues that I worked with, uh, I remember being in the same quarter of John McNichols and John Garland and Rodriguez, Coach Rodriguez over there. We had some great laughs tonight. We will not tell them some of the stories we shared. Um, that wouldn't be good for anybody here tonight. Uh, but we had a great time. Uh, we really did. And I just remember, I said, uh, Coach Lansing, I remember he was with the late Royce Waltman, who I adored, Dennis Rates. I saw him tonight. It's been a long time. I enjoyed all, all our conversations uh, over the years, and thanks for everything that uh, he did for, for me as well. Mitch Hannes, Bob Warren. I remember seeing Coach Warren every morning. He'd run 16 minute, two miles. And he, every single morning I was in there, and I won't tell you, I was actually just getting out of the office and he was coming in. Uh, I was a little nuts, but we won't go into that. Um, but I really want to thank Andy Myers. Andy Myers gave me a chance of a lifetime. Oh, where are you, Andy? Andy? Where? There you are. Andy Myers gave me a chance no one ever would have given me at the age of 24. Um, and she's right when she talks about those interviews. Um, I'm sure at the time, you know, she, it was a little bit crazy to hire somebody that didn't have the experience, but I really appreciate what she said because at the end of the day, she, she gave me a chance. Um, and that has provided me to live a dream that I never thought possible. Um, and I can't imagine. She was firm. She was tough. One thing she learned about me was, to be honest, like when, when she would say no, I just said, well, okay, I'll just try another way. She didn't know that no meant, she thought no meant no. I thought, okay, we try a different version of how to get this across. But I'll tell you what, she was a great boss. She was firm. She was tough. Um, and um, we, had a, we had a great relationship. She believed in me. She believed in me and she was loyal to me. And, and she's been following our careers all these years, all 15 years. It started our 16th year at UVA, won eight national championships, three NCAA national championships in the last four years. And, um, Andy followed every single year, and she stayed in touch. She came to visit uh, over a weekend not too long ago. And then there's Dwayne Klee, my idol, my mentor. I love you, man. You're unbelievable. You're, you're my hero. I told Becky, this guy's unbelievable. I mean, there, there is nobody in the world. I told Becky all the time to come home, I just want to be like that man. He was actually my assistant for a short time here. And he's one of, I, I could, there are no words to describe how much I admire Dwayne Klee. Um, if I could, I just want to be half the man he was, and he's seven beautiful children, him and his, his unbelievable wife, and he represents everything that's right, and I just adore him to death. And then the Guckenberger family. Uh, the Guckenberger family is the, one of the few families in town that they have more orange and blue in their, in, in their um, living rooms and so on than they have sycamore blue, okay? Orange and blue, the Virginia Cavaliers, they've followed us for years, they've been at all the NCAA championships, they've been friends for years, and and um, Ronnie, you're another, the young man Ronnie there had a tragic accident years ago. And uh, we, we, uh, you're, a real, you're a real inspiration for our team, Ronnie. So proud of what you've done and how you've hung in there all those years. You're, you're the best. And uh, thank you for being an inspiration to my team back in Virginia. You are the best. So thank you for that. And then finally, have I hit the five minutes yet? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> I have to thank my wife. Um, I was telling Dwayne tonight, 
and she really is the brains behind everything for the last 21 years as, uh, for me as a head coach. Every time somebody says, I know your wife when I'm in Charlottesville, and when she's here, she's tried to probably talk to everybody she can. And her and Turk used to go to games doing the 50-50 tickets, and, and uh, I know Becky and Andy have stayed in touch over the years, and, and she just she loves this place just like I do. And um, she has supported our program over the years, and every bit of success I've ever had is because of her. Uh, we have four beautiful children together, and we're, we're, we're in a place we love. But I'll tell you, there's nothing that we love more than Indiana State and Terre Haute and everything the community did for us, um, the athletic department, uh, the administration, and all these great coaches. So again, super big honor, so grateful, and thank you so much for this honor. Thank you. Brian, I remember some of those stories with Rodriguez, and you're right, you will not be telling any of them. Later, maybe, but not here. Our next inductee into the class, the 25th class, into the Indiana State Athletics Hall of Fame, Dick Crappentine. In the game of baseball, playing the game the right way will go a long way to success. Putting your nose to the grindstone will get you a major league career. And for Dick Rappentine, staying true to the process got him to the show. A kid from out in uh, Lynn Grove, Iowa, that uh, was special in a lot of different ways. And uh, we had a lot of expos, as you know, sign out of our program. And uh, Dick fell right in, uh, in line with him. The Lynn Grove, Iowa native was a four-sport athlete in high school. He went on to Mesa Junior College in Arizona and in 1978-79 transferred to Indiana State. According to the media guide in 1979, his running fastball with a deceptive motion and delivery will make him a top fireman out of the bullpen. During the 79 season, Grappentine led the Sycamores with 45 strikeouts in 62 innings, while he and Canadian Perry Lychak combined for 13 of the then school record 41 victories at the school's first Missouri Valley Conference baseball title and a trip to the NCAA tournament. You start something, you finish it. You don't just do a job half-heartedly and leave it for somebody else. And he was built like that, uh, mentally. He also could come in and uh, take care of somebody who didn't do the job, you know, and it was just amazing. Grappetine was even better in 1980, leading the Sycamores with a 9-2 record including winning seven straight after a two and two start. He struck out 53 that season in 76 innings of work. He appeared in 17 games, started eight, and six of those starts were complete games. When Grappetine left Indiana State, he was tied with Tom Lewandowski for career wins with 15. In 1980, he signed with Montreal, and in three years, made his major league debut on May the 3rd, 1983, with the Expos. If Dick believed in you, if you, were, if you were part of Dick's endeavors, his life, his family, or whatever, uh, he was always there. He, you could count on him for anything. Just keep your nose to the grindstone, play the game the right way, good things will happen. For Dick Grappetine, in men induction into the Indiana State Athletics Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, Richard Dick Grappentine. I want to say thanks to everybody uh, for uh, for this great honor. It's uh, um, it's pretty uh, pretty amazing. Uh, John Sherman and the whole whole gang, uh, the whole uh, nomination committee, really appreciate everything they've done for us. It really was a, a great uh, great honor. You know, uh, I I've kind of looking at it, saying, man, there's some there's some really great people in this. <laughs> there's they're already been nominated and. Uh, and, and have been Hall of Famers, and I, I look at some of my friends over there that uh, sit in some of my ex-mates, and I, I'm so proud of uh, to be up here for this. So, you know, 
I, I have been have been really lucky in my life, and I think that uh, you know, for me in business and in, and in baseball, it was like I always thought you had to have a vision, you know, and then you had to really surround yourself with great people, and that's what I think this university really really does show you. Um, and then you got to kind of believe you can get it done. You got to keep grinding toward it. And Bob kind of said the process, and that's kind of what I kind of thought I I had to do. I really don't think I was. Uh, that gifted of a player, but I thought we kept grinding at it. Uh, you know, so having a vision, my, my parents, uh, I grew up in a small town in Iowa. I was a farmer, and, uh, uh, but they were great people, and uh, my dad was a biggest fan, and he loved, uh, he loved baseball, and um, he passed away about 12 years ago, and my mom uh, still lived on our farm by herself until two years ago. She's 91 next week, amazingly. <laughs> so uh, she's a she's a gamer, um, but they they were <laughs> they allowed me to to really you know um, work you know work and and have a vision and and really try to get get somewhere in my life, and they believed in me. So thank I most thanks to them, you know. And then I thought surrounding yourself with great people and. Bob Warren. I mean, the things he said up there. I don't know. I don't. That's, I don't know if I can uh, really live up to that one. But uh, you know, he's a, a such a unbelievable, passionate, hardworking guy. And I always thought that the the people we had here were kind of like the underdogs. And uh, a lot of people. I looked at our our um, the people we had in our team, and there was I think we had ten guys play pro ball from my first year in '78, '79. I don't think any of them got drafted when we were here before we got here, but I think we had 10 guys playing. We ended up two guys playing in the big leagues. And beyond that, we had, I think in the next four years where I helped coach, we had another four guys ended up playing in the big leagues. So we had some really great players, but a lot of those kids were never drafted. They came here, and I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, the people around them and the hard work and everything um, that we were able, we were able to go after. Um, finally, the, the coaches also that we had here, um, part of my development as a player was really, after I played here, I was able to stay here and coach. And um, I think that really helped me. I was talking to Mitch Hans today, who's another you know, great player and a guy that I, uh, I was lucky enough to coach when I was here. I came back afterwards for seven, I think seven years and helped coach in the off season. That really helped me as a player and as a person grow. Um, and being around Coach Warren and his family, I was great. So, um, you know, finally, I think, uh, John told me four or five minutes. Uh, I, I originally thought he said 45, and then, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can handle that, but four or five, he, uh, I said, well, I don't know if I can do four or five minutes, and John goes, shoot, he goes, you say hi to Bob Warren in the morning, it's five, four or five minutes, <laughs> you know, so you can do it, and uh, I go, all right, all right, so. But the final thing is, like, you gotta kind of believe in what you're doing, and, uh, you know, keep grinding at it, so. Um, I wanna thank my family are here tonight, that's, Wonderful. I'm glad uh, that they were here. Kind of emotional here, huh? <laughs> kind of sad. <laughs> and finally, I want to thank uh, my wife, who, ironically, my wife uh, met her here, and we were talking today. We took our kids by the Ballyhoo Tavern. <laughs> I, originally, I originally told them we met at the library, but it was really the Bally. And uh, my, wife got a, my wife got her undergrad here, her uh, graduate degree here, and all to her doctorate here. And uh, so we've been together. She's been my uh, uh, biggest part of my life, uh, <laughs> and I appreciate it. So uh, everything done there, she's made me a better person and not a great public speaker. So <laughs> anyway, uh, finally, you know, for the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank you guys for this honor and, and uh, for really letting me be part of this remarkable family and, and everything we have here. So thank you very much. God bless. Really, Bob, it's only three minutes when you say good morning. <laughs> Exaggeration time. Our final inductee into the 25th class of the Indiana State Athletic Hall of Fame, Quentin Michael. You can't buy leadership. It's not handed out. It is, in many cases, earned. For Quentin Michael, he not only earned it, but he was a natural at it. In the time that I was coach at Indiana State University, 
I, I believe that he was, in all probability, the best captain that we ever had. The New Orleans, Louisiana native made a name for himself on the turf of Memorial Stadium during his sophomore season, being named the special team's most valuable player in 81. He would follow that season up in 82 as the second leading tackler for the Sycamores with 95 from his linebacker spot. That leadership came out in full force in 1983 as Michael guided the Sycamores to their first ever NC2A playoff appearance and their first ever win in the playoffs as well. During the 83 season, Michael set a school record for most tackles in a game, having 25 against Illinois State. Ironically, on Saturday, October the 1st, it's the anniversary date that Michael set the record. He was always very, very good at doing what you wanted him to do and translating theory into reality on the field. Michael ranks eighth all-time in tackles in a season with 129. He finished his career second all-time in tackles with 300 and was a first-team All-Missouri Valley Conference selection in 1983. Nothing seemed to faze him. He was able to reach uh, his teammates regardless of circumstance and, and lead them in a positive direction. It wasn't about the accolades, it was about the team and leading the Sycamores to the postseason was the price and the prize for Michael. And with that prize and his leadership, now brings him into the Indiana State Athletics Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, Mr. Quentin Michael. It's a joy to be here tonight. I don't know if I can do four or five minutes. I actually brought four pages, so it's going to be tough. <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but my close friends called me the mayor because for some reason everybody wants to come up and talk to me, so we may be here for a while. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. This is an awesome, awesome experience for me. Um, one that I really actually didn't expect to be here to do the night. I, um, I feel like I'm fortunate to be here. Um, though I played the game, I really played the game. It was all about trying to win championships and try to win games. I really wasn't looking for personal accolades. As a matter of fact, when I first was recruited here, I played on the high school team, and we never won more than three games. And I felt like I gave everything I can do to try to win, and we didn't win. So when I was recruited, I just asked the coach, I said, do you plan on winning? <laughs> so if you plan on winning, then I'll come here. And that was it. And um, the other thing, I have a little funny story. When I was being recruited, um, a guy named Dennis McGinnis came down to recruit me. And, you know, I, I do have a little fun in school. I was a good student, but I also had a little fun. So when he, um, when he came to the class, I actually threw a spitball at the teacher <laughs> while he was there. And um, I think that's why he said, hey, we want this guy on the team. <laughs> now, but first of all, I want to just say I want to thank God for the opportunity to be here today. It's, uh, it is a true blessing for me. And, you know, I, um, I look back at my career, and I, could just, I just have a lot of grace and a lot of thankfulness for what I've, what I've been able to accomplish, but more importantly for the amount of people that I've met here and the people that have been close to me throughout the years and just being at this wonderful university. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Bradley, really has an understanding of how important the sports programs are for the community and for the university. And that means a lot to me because I've been doing a lot of things to try to support the university ever since 1979 as a player and also as a, a person that, uh, you know, helped out with any, any phase that I could here at the university. I actually have one of the things that I do is I really, really never say no. So if anybody asks me to try to help out, I've always been a person to try to help out. Um, Sherrod Clinksdales, I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you um, for this presentation. And I also want to say some special thanks to a few people that have been really 
um, really priorities in my life. First of all, I want to say thank you to my lovely wife, Donna. I think everything in my life got better when I met her. Okay. And I met her here at Indiana State University. So that was just wonderful to me. My friends actually say that she saved my life. So, you know, same thing. Yeah. The next person I want to thank is Coach Dennis Race. Coach Race was, when I first came here, he was my position coach. And it's very, uh, Coach Race as a position coach could be very difficult, very tough. And um, I appreciate all the wonderful things that you said about me, Coach. And um, all I can say to you is uh, I really enjoyed being coached by you because I learned a lot, I endured a lot, but most importantly is that I feel like we, ha we have a wonderful relationship and that relationship has been important for me as a coach, as a friend, as a mentor, I really love you and thank you. And then I have a, a lot of people here, my, my friends and family, but I want to say thank you to my kids that are here. And I, and I told my son today that didn't make it today, I would actually mention it, but my oldest son and his four kids were on the way here and their plane was canceled, so they can't be here tonight. But they're, uh, they expected to be here, they're gonna still come for the rest of the weekend, but I want to thank my family for being here tonight and all my close personal friends because they mean so much to me and it goes well beyond just these uh, times that I've been here at the university and most of my close friends I've met here at Indiana State so another another real blessing to me and then there's a couple other people Jeff Lorick Jeff Lorick is a, a, a friend of mine he played ball with me but one of the important things with that is when I was recruited here my first day my first time in Indiana I thought it snowed and then it went away. <laughs> I was from Louisiana, so I thought, well, this is great. I was coming up here because of the snow. It was like, it was awesome. But I thought it was snow one day and then it's gone the next. And it wasn't the case. So when I was recruited up here, the first person I met other than the coaches was Jeff Lorick because when I came up, I got to Indianapolis and then it snowed in and I, and I had nowhere to go. So he and his family took me in and we became close friends ever since. And I just appreciate that. I appreciate that moment too. Yeah, it's really close. And not only that, he actually kept me groomed up pretty well for all the years that I was here. So I enjoyed it. Um, Peggy and Greg Arnold, and I know I'm, I'm going to be a minute, but Peg, Peggy and Greg Arnold, we used to have this, um, this event called the Fish Fry. And um, it's where we have an opportunity to meet people in the community, and they sort of adopt us. So Greg and Peggy Arnold adopted me, and they took good care of me the whole time I was here. Anytime I needed food, and that was regularly often. <laughs> Anytime I needed anything, they were always there for me, and I really appreciate them. They traveled all the way here from Georgia to be here tonight, and I appreciate them being here. And uh, I have some of my fraternity brothers here, Alpha Phi Alpha. They're here visiting me and um, being a part of this, and I appreciate them. They've always been there for me, and through the tough times, I really appreciate them being here. And then all of my wonderful teammates, some are here tonight, and I thank you for being here, and some aren't, but they've been very very inspirational and influential in my life, and I do appreciate them. Um, and I always tell them, you know, I made them great players. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking through the Hall of Fame list, and we have, we have a full team that was inducted in 19, the, the team was uh, the 1984 football team. And um, I'm very proud of that. I was actually part of the coaching staff then. But we also have 10 other members that are from the era that I was here that's in the Indiana State University Hall of Fame, which is huge. So I'm, I'm really fortunate to be around, you know, in that program, a very, very talented group of people. And um, it's just a joy that uh, I have that opportunity. I, I'm going to go really quickly here, but I do have some funny things. I consider them funny, but I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, in a very tough environment. And I played my first football at a, with a sandlock team called the Tupelo Turtles, okay? We weren't slow, but we, <laughs> that was our names. And we played um, against, played in the recreational league. Um, and I played at 12 years old in the 17-year-old league. Oh. Yeah, so I had a, I had a really um, tough experience because I tried to play up played bigger competition, and I think that helped me a lot when I came here because when I stepped on campus, it was a lot different than what I was used to in terms of talent, so it was pretty good. I went to Nichols, Francis C. Nichols High School. 
And I competed in track and field, and I also competed in football and was fortunate enough to get a scholarship here. I don't know, I don't know what they saw, but you know, it worked out okay. <laughs> yeah. But I was a multiple sport athlete and very proud of it. But I will tell you, it's a great day to be a Sycamore. It's a wonderful time for me. And um, I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity to be here. I love Indiana State. I've been here since 1979. The reason I say here, I'm still here working in a lot of different ways, not physically working for the university, but I help with fundraising on the Sycamore Athletic Fund. I've worked with helping students and mentoring students. I show up for anything that any of the coaching staffs want me to do, whether it be talk to a team, help a student out. All of those things are very important to me because I, I really believe in what we're doing here with this program. And I know the value of the athletics programs and what it means to individuals like student athletes and like me. Without a scholarship here, I'm not sure where I would have ended up, but I, I just think that that athletic scholarship and coming here and getting that education has really made me a much better person, more well-rounded well person, and one that I, I feel very confident that has been a helpful and been a catalyst for support for this university and for many others. So I'm very happy about that. And um, my last remarks would be, Indiana State has been the foundation for developing me and many youths. And um, that should not be forgotten. It's a wonderful place to learn, to grow, and develop. And I appreciate all the opportunities that I've had here in sports and academics and just networking and understanding, um, getting to meet people and just the uh, diversity of the university. I really appreciate it. And I thank you guys for being here, and I thank you for your time. Quinn, thank you. How about one more big round of applause for the newest members of the Hall of Fame? With some closing remarks from tonight's event, my pleasure to introduce to you the Director of Athletics at Indiana State, Mr. Sherrard Klinkscales. Good evening, everyone. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful night. Um, John, outstanding. Well done. Nice job, man. You know, I sit here and listen uh, to all the inductees and I just sit here and I'm just humbled at how much passion, how much pride they have in this university. I'm so privileged to be able to lead this department uh, under the guide of Dr. Bradley. Uh, it's such an honor and to hear the tradition uh, that is here. And I'm a person that really believes in tradition, loyalty, and being honorable. And um, all the inductees certainly uh, articulated that and I, and I felt it. And um, you know, my goal, Lord's willing, is to continue to do that and to be able to reach out to all of you all and to keep you all engaged at, in this wonderful place. You know, it's interesting, um, one of my uh, favorite quotes uh, is Margaret Mitchell. Margaret Mitchell wrote Gone with the Wind. Uh, one of her quotes that I really uh, take to heart, it says, life's under no obligation to give us what we expect. As I listen to each of the inductees talk, they didn't come here to try to have individual honors and to play and to do this, that, and the other. They want to help their teams and be successful and win. And they went through adversity, and they went through trials and tribulations, but they endured and endured and endured and endured. And then on a night like tonight, they got a chance to celebrate that and to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. That embodies what it means to be a student athlete, especially here at Indiana State. And I just am so honored that I could be a part of this and just know that we're going to continue to recruit athletes like this and represent all of you all in the way you should be represented. Thank you so much for being here, and go Sycamores. <laughs> Gerard, thank you. That is our program. That is our evening. Congratulations to the 25th class of the Indiana State Athletics Hall of Fame. Please drive home safely, and we'll see you all weekend here for homecoming. God bless.